back, ladies and gentlemen, to the MIAA's Winning Ways. I'm Jay Harrigan. Here this week, we've been talking to a lot of teams that are in the high school basketball state tournament here in Massachusetts. But right now, we're lucky enough to be joined by the director of the tur tournament and also the athletic director at Hingham High School, Jim Quattrimone. Jim, how are you today? I'm great, Jay. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. Um, so, first thing, it's been this week's been a little bit of a challenge uh, for you just because of the weather, which we have been lucky the first two and a half weeks. We really didn't have that, um, but it seemed to go very well. You, you you went very smoothly. A couple of you had to find a couple of alternate places for teams to play, but other than that, that it seemed to go quite well. Well, I'm, I'm glad it looked that way, Jay. <laughs> um, <laughs> the weather definitely did provide some challenges, but I think the structure that we had in place where each game had a three-day window that it could be played, and then a buffer day leading up um, to, the, to the Final Four and Finals weekend, um, I think gave us a flexibility that, that kept us on track. Uh, we, we pushed it pretty close. Yeah. Um, um, and, and as well, I think, you know, we had in, in late December, early January, we began the work of securing sites for the uh, for the, the round of four. Um, and so when we saw the weather and what was happening with the weather, we were able to scramble a little bit with people that had agreed uh, to, to host as other buildings were came offline and were not available on, on a Wednesday, for example. Um, and so we, with the team, created a backup plan for that Tuesday for just about everybody. Um, Monday, we put as many games in as we felt like we needed to to maintain a flexibility for the experience for the teams playing Friday mm -hmm. and early Saturday. And then tried to wait as long as we could to see if we could get those Tuesday games in. And when that became clear we weren't going to be able to do it, we executed that plan and moved everything to Wednesday. Um, it, it certainly was a fair amount of work to let teams know before they were postponed where they'd be going if Plan right. B had to be activated. But I think it was the right thing to do to make sure everybody understood what was going to happen and weren't scrambling at the last minute. So I'm glad it I'm glad it looked smooth, <laughs> and I'm really glad we stayed. I'm really glad we stayed on track. We were one or two Western Mass games uh, being postponed and going into Thursday to really causing some problems yeah. with our, our, our weekend schedule, but thankfully it, it, it didn't happen, and um, we have the schedule that, we, that, that we've presented last night. It, um, I, I know a couple of coaches have been uh, extremely um, complimentary of you and your team, um, especially uh, Coach Vaughn out of Mansfield just had uh, brought up that any communication, if you told them he'd he'd have an email about what whatever, a schedule change, where they were playing. If you told him by 9 o'clock, he would get on his computer at 901 and it would be there. Who, in addition to you, some of the um, key players on your team? It take, people, um, I don't think, really understand what a massive undertaking it is. Sure. So our, our team is Peter Smith, the, the assistant director and the office staff as the basketball liaison. Uh, Jim Clark yep. in the office, and you know Jim not only has been important to the, the work here with the tournament, but um, in running through the regular season and getting us up to that uh, seating day, um, you know his involvement for that and the and, and the regular ratings being produced on Tuesday, Friday was tr just tremendous for the for the entire season. Ron Ford is one of our assistant directors, the former basketball coach and athletic director at Coasa High School, and Dave Keir. Uh, out west, I believe he's the retired athletic director at Smith mm. uh, Academy. Um, so, basically, and Paul Halloran, our, our, our signer. And basically, what we do is as we're creating the matchups and schedules and, and picking the sites, um, we're on the Zoom. <laughs> it can get it can go late. Yeah. Um, and we're uh, first making sure that we have all the results uh, from the evening, chasing that for for a little while and then starting to talk about where and when. Um, and, you know, one of us has MapQuest direct directions over, we're triangulating, you yeah. know, what we're, what we're looking at when we're doing that is just making sure as best we can that teams are within 20 miles of each other in travel. 
not meaning 20 miles away, meaning whatever one team is traveling, that that is within 20 miles of what the other team is traveling. Right, right. And then it, as well, trying to find the best sites for the level of game that's being played in the anticipated crowd. The the use of GoFan has been um, very helpful um, in helping us uh, forecast what we think teams mm -hmm. are going to bring. And then we can compare that to the capacities of the, the buildings that we have online. Um, believe it or not, each of the nights that we're scheduling, we're probably leaving 10 buildings unscheduled. Um, but I think it's important that we go that far. And I'm thankful for to the, I'm very thankful for the sites that actually are hosting, but I'm thankful for, to those sites that, that, that agree to host them when we never use them because right. it really helps create that flexibility. A lot of folks want to hear that schedules are, you know, it's this day and schedules are set and then the song is set and Division 5 is playing at this time. I think that the three-day window and the way that we're running this makes a certain that it's what's best for the schools. Um, I know that, that at times not knowing in advance can be inconvenient for the fans and I don't it, that's not lost on me, but you know we're doing what we're doing for the student athletes first and foremost, and we can care about others, but that that's our that's our priority. So that team um, really has been vital in getting this work done and, and just having fresh eyes on things. And you know, I I, I hope that uh, I, I think it's accurate to say that we trust each other enough that you know no one is is afraid to raise their hand and say, wait a minute, that's not right. Right. We need to we need to change that. Um, and so it, 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 there's a trust in that room, and, and it's certainly from my end that um, these folks know what they're talking about. They know the geography, and uh, that what we land on when we all collectively agree on it that we've that we've done we've done some good work that night. Yeah, it, it uh, as you said, you know, you talked about the schools you have been using, but a ton of credit has to go to the schools that say, yeah, yeah, you can use our building, and then you or who, whomever has to make that phone call say hey we're, we're not using your building tonight um for people being willing to put themselves out uh I, i'm sure that your job is not easy but that's a little piece that maybe makes it a little easier yeah i, I mean i'm very thankful for the, these folks and we, we we try to get away ahead of it as best we can to give them as much time um I, it's not lost on me that it's easier to say yes to something that's happening in, in two months than right. in, in three days. <laughs> um, but we we read up front, you know, as we're asking the questions, can you host on, on day one, day two, day three? If you can host on any of those days, can you host double headers? And please understand that this is an if and depending on matchup. So we haven't had any right. trouble. People have been great in understanding and um you know, I think that some of our colleagues across the, the, the state have been um, very generous with their time and with their facilities, and certainly we couldn't pull this off without without that generosity. Well, and you have some great facilities, I think, several years ago when they um, added Worcester State to the mix. Uh, I, I have been out there for numerous games, and the atmosphere there is as good as any place I've seen it, it almost reminds me of the old UMass Boston, um, but an updated version of that. Right. Uh, right. I found the Sonkin Center last year. I was very impressed for atmosphere, ease, in and out and all that. Uh, the Sonkin Center, I, I, I would think you guys really like using that facility and it's, it's convenient but it's got everything you need. And again, other people have been very complimentary, specifically Coach Vaughn. Uh, he he said about Worcester State said it was unbelievable. So what? there are some criteria I'm sure you'll go through. Is there anything that stands out in that criteria that you, you really look for for uh, the student athletes? I, I think that you want to be in a place that that when the student athlete in the, the championship game gets into that venue, that you know they're kind of looking around, almost with with awe. Yeah. Um, you know, and and Songus definitely provides that kind of initial you know stadium wow factor when you when you walk in. I also think though the, the folks at UMass Lowell and the Songus staff have been uh, tremendous to work with. 
you know, the production on the, on the Jumbotron, um, you know, the use of, of any of the locker room space that we need so we can create that locker room rotation, get people checked in. Um, our staff uh, game day, on the game day production of making sure that we have a, you know, an adult and usually retired or, or current athletic director that is helping teams, getting them to their locker room, just being there to answer the question, just so there's no mystery. And, you know, between the, mm. you know, the call we did today with the principals and ADs of the schools that are um, involved, again, to, as soon as you pull up in front of uh, Songus and your bus, there's Songus staff there telling you what to do, which way to go. As soon as you walk into that east entrance, we're there checking you in, giving you your credentials, getting you right to your locker room. Um, it, it, it just makes for a smooth a smooth process. Mm. And then I think that the, the way that the seating, the, just the way that the, the, the atmosphere within Song is, is, is just really cool. Mm. Um, I think the fans are close enough, but far enough that it helps to, that we're, as we're managing the game, uh, especially post game. Um, but there's really not a bad seat in the house. I mean, you, you, you're, you're right there. Mm. Um, and I, I, I think it's, you know, I, I do understand that, you know, getting to Songus from certain places in the Commonwealth can be difficult, but I don't think anyone that once they got inside Songus last year was disappointed. Right. Yeah. I don't, I, I the, one of the things I really loved about it last year, I, I walked out onto the court, uh, in between games and, even though it wasn't full, it had the feeling and the sound yeah. level that it was full. Uh, you know, in other venues, that isn't necessarily the case. You, you don't even get, you know, half of the lower bowl filled or anything. Um, and, and it creates that that very exciting big game atmosphere. <laughs> uh, so you, we talked about Saga Center being the atmosphere. I'm sure you, when you consider other sites, even though they're they're prior to the semifinals, their home team, but there are some restrictions on that. You have to hold X, a certain amount of people or whatever. When you've got to try to locate another site, I would assume making it have that big game feel is a consideration to give the student athletes the best possible experience. So before we get to the round of four, uh, Jake, if the home school does not have the required minimum capacity to host the event, then that host school is charged with selecting okay. the site that they'll go to. Uh, and they certainly take advantage of that because it's listed in the format that if they uh, if they don't do so, then they will go to the lower seeds school building, Okay. If, if they do. So nobody wants that, obviously. Um, I do have, and it's written in the format, I do have discretion and I'll usually um, connect with with Peter on this one when it does happen. I do have discretion of having, uh, of allowing a school that isn't meeting that minimum capacity to host regardless. And that again is where the GoFan um, data mm. comes in handy to look at where, you know, what they've done to date. Um, and then on, on, a, on a few occasions, what we've done is, is told the host school um, that didn't meet the capacity, if they could go ahead and start selling tickets, secure another site, and we, we would watch the tickets hmm. to see where they, where they were going. And if the numbers didn't jump, that we would allow them to stay home. I, I felt good about that. We did that four or five times because then it was math. It was dictating yeah. a team leaving their, their, their building. I know how, how that, can be, that can be hard. Um, it really can be hard. And a couple times we had to do it. Um, but it was math that told us we had to do it and not just simply what was written in the document. The, um, the GoFan experience uh, for you folks, I, I think it's, it's interesting and it, it's a great testament, I guess, to GoFan that it allows not only the fans to buy the tickets, have them on their phone, whatever it may be, but give you the up-to-date information where in years past, you wouldn't know necessarily till five minutes before the game when the line was out to the parking lot. Yeah, and I've noticed that this year, just, uh, you know, after one year of doing it, this year it's accelerated. I don't re recall very often looking at caps um, mm. and, and getting into caps, but, you know, I think the, the interest was there leading up to the finals, and, and we've had pretty good crowds at some of these sites. And to be able to talk to an AD real time while they're looking at their crowd, I'm looking at what they've sold, 
and they're, you know, we can't get many more people in here, let's cap. And right. being able to do that, you know, again, real time, I think has been very useful. Which you, we have seen, uh, specifically our, uh, the Neshoba at Sharon game was a sellout, and it was a sellout just early in the day for the most part. And uh, everybody did a great job of letting people know. Um, I know that, I think it was the same night Mansfield played, and if they weren't sold out, they were darn close. Um, so it, it, it's got to help everybody, not just the schools involved, but you involved, what your expectations are of each site, when you can get that information ahead of time versus five minutes before tip-off. Right. Uh, you know, I think you guys, as I remember, did a great job uh, last year at Saugus Center, um, you know, throwing videos up on the, the Jumbotron that they have there. Uh, you know, time, not that it was timeout entertainment, but, you know, you kept, kept the spectators engaged, yeah. it seemed like. And, and I would think that's huge for the overall, especially if you've got a game that starts off in the the spread, like last year's finals, there were a few games that second half, they weren't nail biters. You were, you kind of right. knew where they were going to go. Uh, yeah. I would say to you, Jay, it, and this is an, an interesting thing, I think maybe for people to realize, you, you know, the MIA isn't just, you know, one or two people that just kind of okay. hang around and, and, and make decisions that I think people often think it's, it's, it is made up. Uh, it is a collection of, of school administrators that that you know form committees and work under the certain guidelines to make to make decisions and and um, I think often uh, I think social media has helped helps us see this uh, I think often people are looking at the MIA and, and accusing them of just you know working for every last dollar there yeah um, I think I think the MIA at, at times is accused of you know just trying to squeeze everybody for that last last buck that last dollar. And, you know, I think two things that I would point out um, that, that don't necessarily support that perspective. Number one is it was really important to me last year that we weren't putting teams at Zongas and playing a 10 a.m. game. Mm. Um, and that I really wanted us to have a, a third kind of series of, of you know, primetime games in, in, to avoid the 10 o'clock game. Mm -hmm. And that certainly came with expense. To add oh, that third day, yeah, and uh, and the, the those that make those decisions uh, agreed, and for the second year now we will have the two four four format. The other thing is, the the other point that I would make is that production crew that runs the cameras certainly adds to our bill for using Sonus. I bet it does. And, yeah, and and. You know, so that, but that, as you pointed out, our dollars well spent. It keeps people engaged. It creates a, it just lifts the environment, mm. and and it makes it more worthy of of, of, a, of a championship event. Um, and and I think those are little things, that that really indicate, you know, that the folks that we're working with, in in Franklin do care uh, about the student athlete experience and 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 putting on a championship event. And I think. You know, we live in a, in a world where we, we really, even if we want to, can't make everybody happy, but we're trying to be fair and we're trying. <laughs> it, it, it would, we do try. Yes. We don't always do it, uh, but uh, we are trying our best to, to create something here that, um, that will be a lifetime memory for not only for the participants, but maybe even for the community at the yeah, school. Yeah, and their family members. I, I will say that, it, at least my experience over the last, would it spend roughly a year and a half, two years uh, over at the MIA MIAA office? There is a um, 180 degree change, I think, in direction. They're very, Dr. Baldwin, and he, he preaches this, and, you know, he, he wants people accessible. He wants people out there. He wants this and that. And I think they're all doing a great job. Uh, job you brought up, Jim, Steve uh, Dzinski, um, all of them just they're doing a, a tremendous job there, and I'm sure working with them. That's when you have such a good crew to work with. That's going to help. 
Absolutely. When, when you, you know you can reach out to people, you, can, you will hear from them. They'll get you the answer you need, or they'll call you back once they've researched and get, and get what they need mm. uh, to answer you. It's, I agree. I, yeah. I, I've enjoyed um, my experience working with the office in, in this role. And I, as a member of the board of directors, see kind of a different side yeah. of things as well. Um, and I, I, I absolutely am excited about the direction that Dr. Baldwin is taking our association. I, 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 I'm good at Jim. I give you just a ton of credit for what you've done the last couple of years, uh, the team you've put together, even Dan, including him. Uh, we all have to help out in different areas, uh, but you've, you've done a tremendous job. And I think if the people that are out there complaining, you're never going to get all of them, but if they took a moment to just think of what goes into everything that you guys do, they might have a, a different perspective. I, I completely agree with that. And I don't take any of, of the second guessing or the complaining, you know, to a certain extent first, right. there's some, right. there's some stuff out there that's kind of mean, but yeah. um, you know, in the role of an athletic director, you hear, you hear those things from time to time anyway. Um, uh, instead though, I, when I see some of the things I did tweet out the other night, just trying to put some information out there uh, to combat some of the things I was I was hearing, mm. so that the narrative that at least existed in Twitterverse was the truth. Um, and I I think you know if you can remove some of the mystery uh, and and people have a little bit more information, they can yeah. they understand the process a little better. Um, it, it you know there was one particular tweet that I I thought was quite valuable asking for a new rule to be put in place that if if you're mad about the facility that you're playing in and you have another facility you'd like to have been playing in you must know that that facility was available to the folks organizing the tournament and um you know that's a that's important <laughs> that's important you know i'm not trying to put people further from their right their their front doors um but i also am calculating whether the, the you know the, the, as you triangulate between the two schools, as you look at the capacity, and then you look at the quality of the building. And, and I think you brought up Worcester State earlier. I couldn't be more thankful for them who agreeing to, to host on the, on this level. It, it does require a fair amount of work yeah. from that, that school community, especially on that snow removal day. They really went above and beyond. Um, but that's a that that's an environment. That That's a place it, it, that... Tremendous, yeah. You know, and, and so... Those are the things that, I, that, that that I'm thinking about, that our team is thinking about. And, you know, in the end, it is my responsibility and it is ultimately going to be my decision. But I want you to know that I don't do any of these things on an island. I have a team. Right. And we've committed to, to getting that team together. They've committed the time. Certainly it would be easier at times for me to just make the call. But mm. I want uh, fresh eyes looking at things. I want people that I feel like are knowledgeable and committed uh, and, and I'm receptive to the feedback and, and to, you know, pointing something out and, and encouraging a different direction. I mean, there are three or four things that we've done this particular tournament that weren't my idea. Somebody mm. blurted them out while we were going and, and that's the direction we went. Um, I think even including the Saturday lineup, we had a different lineup and we were fighting over it and going back and forth and then somebody threw something else out. Plan B quickly became plan A and we were good to go. So, um, we're, we are, we're receptive, we're listening, uh, and we're trying to get more information out so that people mm. can, can understand process. And then, you know, maybe they might still want to be mean, that's fine. But as long as they're mean and, and they understand. Yeah. Taylor Swift can write a song about them if they continue to want to be mean. Uh, I, I do think people you talked, you just brought up, People don't necessarily, some of the stuff I've read, they don't understand that in addition to finding out if that building is available, willing to host, there's a cost. The, the, none of this is done for free. Um, the facilities are all businesses. They're, and, and I don't think you ever hear 
you don't hear people necessarily bringing that up, and that should not be the most important thing. The most important thing are the student athlete. But there is so much that goes into making various decisions. And I think if people were to take a step back and think about it, they might realize, man, that's going to be brutal making that decision. Right. Right. I, I also think, Jay, when you, when you get into the, fi- the, the people considering finances and how much money a tournament makes, the, the association is charged with running tournaments for all sports. Right. And and not all sports can generate revenue when they offer a tournament. Yeah. Um, you know, so this, ter- this tournament um, really does play a role in so many other games because of the revenue that's generated. And I like that. I right. like thinking about that. Right. I like thinking that we're doing something here that in itself is 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 really cool, and and then it almost has a legacy of of helping to have other pursuits, other games that maybe I'm not involved with directly, but uh, my kids are yeah. getting in high school, and you know we're securing that and helping that experience along for them. Yeah. Well, Jim, first of all, uh, I appreciate you taking the time, the willingness to come on. Um, I know we've talked in the past. I know you've talked to, we have some mutual uh, guys that we're friendly with. Uh, I, I know some of the stuff that you've had to deal with. And, you know, I want to let people know that you will, you may not have it Monday, but in the next week or so, you're going to sit down, you're going to go through everything and you're going to have meetings and you're going to look at this worked, this didn't work, let's look at this. And, and I think people need to realize that. It's also a, a, a year-round job. It's not the beginning of March till the middle of March. It is a year-round endeavor. It can be, but 100% on the review. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that a two-year review is what the TMC was charging us with. And, and we'll be looking at the recommendations that we've yeah. been hearing um, you know, I think there were certain issues from from year one. I, I don't think many more have popped up from year two, but they have. Um, and some real conversation about what's right, what's working and what's not working, uh, and put that into the, the hands of TMC and, and other decision makers, um, because now it's not it's not a theory and it's not a right. It's it, you know it's not a well let's wait and see. It's it's no. It'll be myself and, and our team will have been able to explain what we are seeing mm. and what we're experiencing and where where there are areas that we can make significant improvement. And I, I think there are a couple. Um, you know, I've been careful on on getting into any of them really right. publicly yet um, because I think it, it, in my role it would distract from the tournament and from, from the teams playing, so I'm, I'm going to maintain that. But right. I, I would 100% assure you that when this tournament is over, that 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 work will be done. A- a- absolutely. And, uh, you know, again, thank you for your time. It's a busy time right now. Uh, I also thank you for all the hard work you do. It, it was great to see when they asked you to be in charge and you accepted it. Uh, you know, I've been to Hingham High a handful of times, always treated tre- tremendously well by you and your staff. Um, and it's great to be able to see Good people have good things happen, but bringing your philosophy on the way you treat people to an entire state tournament uh, is to be applauded. So thank you for that. I appreciate that, Jay. The easiest thing in the world to do is to be kind. Yeah. All right. Thanks, All right. Jim. Thanks, Jay. Take care. Take care. And that was Jim Quattrimoni, the director of the high school basketball tournament in Massachusetts. Uh, he is also the athletic director at Hingham High. So thank you for Jim for taking the time to see us. It was great. And that'll wrap it up for this episode of Winning Ways with the MIAA. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.